Hello and welcome back to the shop. Today we will be working on part two of the screw jack build. If you missed part one, I'll put a link somewhere up above here. You can check that out if you're interested. But without further ado, let me bring you in closer to the bench. We'll go over a quick recap as to where we are now and where we need to go, and then we'll get right to work. All right, so first things first, just in case you're not familiar, this is a screw jack or commonly called a machinist jack. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail here, but if you are unfamiliar with this tool and would like to know more about what it is and what it's used for, you can check out the first video in this series for a bit more information on that. Either way, this is a commercial screw jack, and in this video, we are going to be completing the build of our shop-made screw jack. These are the two pieces that we completed last week in the first video. This is, of course, the main body of the screw jack. And then we have our adjustment ring or adjustment bushing, which is what I'm calling it, which fits right inside of this recess in the main body. This is, of course, tapped for the main screw or the jack, which is this part here. As you can see, it's threaded. And the basic idea is you turn the adjustment ring one way and it goes in, you turn it the other way and the screw jack will push out. So basically make it go up or down. We have a couple of tapped holes here that are going to be used for screws which double as keys and this one is also a locking screw for the adjustment ring. So with the screw just loosely inserted, I can't pull the ring out, but I can spin it freely. And then if I just torque down on it a little bit, that adjustment ring is locked in place. And when it's all finished, this will effectively lock our jack at whatever height we set it. And so that's basically it. You are officially up to speed. So what do we need to make next? Well, of course we need to make the main screw, which is going to interface with this threaded hole here. And we also need to make the platform which is this piece here. That's what the work sits on. So in order to accomplish that, I of course have my drawings right here, my plans for this project. Uh, if you would like to get a copy of these drawings for yourself, you can do so on my Patreon. The link will be in the description. And with that, I think that we are all caught up. So let's head over to the lathe and get started on making the main screw. I will be starting off here with a three quarter inch piece of 1144 stress proof steel. I like using this particular material for things like screws because it won't move around on you after it's been machined. First things first, of course I am going to face the part and then I am going to drill for a center. This is going to be turned down to under a half inch and there's going to be a couple of inches of stick out so I definitely am going to want tail support. There is a good deal of flexibility in the finished length of the screw, so I'm just pulling out a generous amount of material here and eyeballing it with a ruler. I need to turn this 3 quarter inch material down for a 7 16 10 TPI Acme thread. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is take an initial pass to establish my starting diameter. From here, I want to take the material down to right around 435 thou. Give or take a thou in either direction is fine.
Next, I need to cut a relief so I have somewhere to start threading. Whenever I cut a thread relief, I like to take that relief down to the nominal depth for whatever thread I'm cutting. This way, when I begin cutting the thread, I know that when my threading tool just begins to scratch the surface of that thread relief, I should be right about just on size for my thread. And with that, I am ready to cut a thread. I ended up with a really nice fit on this thread, so I'm pretty happy about that. And I'm now ready to part this thing off. Like I said, the final length of the screw isn't terribly critical. Really, I just don't want it to be too long so that it sticks out of the bottom of the screw jack when it's retracted. For that reason, after I part it off, I'll just flip it around and sort of clean up the back side, not paying a lot of attention to where the final length ends up. And now I just need to flip it around one more time. I need to drill and tap a hole in the end of the screw. And this hole is what's gonna be used to secure the platform to the top of the main screw. Once again, like all the other tapped holes in this project, this is going to be drilled and tapped for 832. And I'm just gonna use the pre-existing center hole to get started. I am zeroing my micrometer scale on my tailstock because the depth of this hole is important. You want to make sure that you measure the screw that you'll be using to attach the platform to your main screw because you want that fastener to bottom out before it tightens down on the platform. You need the platform to be able to spin independently of the main screw so that you can line up the V-groove that we're going to cut later with whatever stock you happen to be supporting.
That is one more piece almost finished. However, we still need to head over to the milling machine and cut in a keyway. As usual, I am using my indexing fixture to hold this part in the mill. This could easily be done with collet blocks or a V-block or any other means of holding a round part in a mill, but I like showing off my indexer in videos. And that is one more piece finished and only one to go. The last part that I'm going to be making is of course the platform. I did decide to make this part out of brass. I don't really know why, I just, I guess I thought it would look nice. But because of that, I'm just using a piece of stock brass that I had lying around. It's undersized to what's called for on the drawing. And for that reason, I'm just going to clean it up here and I'm just on the outside diameter, just taking really as little of a cut as I can to just clean up this surface. I'm not really sure what size it's going to end up. It's somewhere slightly below an inch, but it honestly doesn't really matter. It's going to be big enough to do what it's supposed to do. Next, I need to drill the clearance hole for the fastener screw. I just need to make sure that this hole is big enough so that the platform can rotate freely around the screw. And then I have to counterbore the face of the platform for the head of the fastener screw. I need to make sure that the head of that screw doesn't protrude above the working surface of the platform. Because, of course, if it does, then the work isn't going to be able to sit on the platform. And yes, once again, I am using an end mill in a drill chuck. It works great, and it's easy. What do you want me to do? Flipping the part around here, I have intentionally left myself a good quarter of an inch of extra length on the part. I'm going to use this extra material to turn a one half inch diameter arbor directly into the part. I can then use that arbor to hold on to the part for all of my upcoming machining operations. Thank you. 
And so now you can see I have my part and the half inch arbor sticking out of the back, which I am going to make use of immediately. Taking advantage of my lathe here to easily scribe a center line across the face of the part, which I will then use to locate my next feature on the milling machine. Again, using that one half inch arbor to hold onto the part with a one half inch collet and a collet block. Taking a page out of Mr. Pete's playbook here and just using the surface plate to line up that scribed center line and make it parallel with the top and bottom of my collet block. Using the collet block allows me to easily position my part at a 45 degree angle to my cutter. And then I can use my scribed line to locate my cutter on the center line of the part. From there, once I have touched off, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to move my cutter down and into the part the appropriate amount to create the V-Way that I want. And there it is, the last piece all finished. I did take it back over to the lathe and did a little bit of cleanup. I just put a little chamfer on this top face here. Of course, I cut that arbor off and I added this little inset on the back here. I figure that's all stuff that we've already done in this video enough times. You didn't need to watch me do it again, so I just did it off camera. But that is it and that makes all of our pieces. I think that we are ready for assembly. All right, so let's put this thing together. I have already installed this set screw in the bottom hole here. That is the set screw that acts as a key for the main screw. You can see it poking out into that bore there. So that's already installed. And now I can put my main screw and my adjustment ring together. And I got a really nice fit on these threads, by the way. Definitely happy about how that came out. It's very smooth. So now I can line up the keyway in my main screw with the set screw in this bore, and that will drop right into place. And I can install my locking screw, which should lock this whole assembly together so that it doesn't come apart. And that's good to go. And now all that I have to do is attach my platform. So here's the thing about the platform. It is going to attach to the main screw via this threaded hole here and using this fastener, this screw right here. And if I did all of this correctly, if I got all these dimensions right, this screw, it should bottom out in this hole before it tightens against the platform itself. Because I want the platform to be able to spin freely, of course. So hopefully, that is how this is going to work out. But at the same time, it also needs to sit down in this counter bore far enough so that it doesn't stick up into the V-way. So hopefully that will all work out. And yep, it looks like it does. So yep, that works good there. And it's just loose enough too so that there is 
if you can see it here, there's a little side to side play because you do want a little bit of side to side play and you want this to be able to spin because you know, you're not ever going to be quite sure what you're going to be trying to push it up against. So you want it to have a little bit of movement so that it can adjust itself. So that feels pretty good. And so there it is. There is the shop made screw jack fully assembled. Show you the action here. If I turn in this direction, it will cause the jack to rise, spin it back in the other direction, and it will lower back down into the main body. You know, I gotta say that is a nice smooth action. I mean, it feels good. It really does. It feels like a nice tool. It's also, it's very heavy, but I wanted it to be heavy, you know? So when you sit it on your mill table, it's, it's not gonna like fall over or anything like that or move around on you. So it's nice and chunky. It's got some weight to it. And yeah, that action is super smooth. I think gone with the Acme thread was a good call. And I think 10 TPI was a good call too. It's kind of right in the middle, you know, it's not so coarse that it's hard to decide where it's gonna be, but it's also not so fine that it takes forever to raise or lower this thing. Yeah, I think that uh, I like it. I definitely like it. And you know, if I get it set wherever I want it, I can take this lock screw and lock everything into place. And now it's not going anywhere. I can unlock it and we're back in action. So there it is, the shop made screw jack or machinist jack. I am happy with how this thing came out. And I guess that wraps up another project. I have to admit, I am pretty happy with how this one turned out. Um, is it the nicest screw jack in the world or the screw jack perfected? No, of course it's not. But you know, for me, it turned out the way that I had imagined it in my head, or at least it works the way that I had imagined in my head. And I'm proud of it. Um, I don't know if I have ever mentioned this before, but I happen to be very passionate about tools. I know, big surprise, right? Uh, but honestly, tools are a really big part of why I got into machining in the first place. I wanted to design and make my own tools. And I know that I have a long way to go <laughs> and a lot to learn before I can even come close to calling myself a tool maker. But with each one of these projects that I complete on this channel, it does feel like I am taking one small step towards that goal. And honestly, this channel and making these videos has really pushed me to constantly kind of step out of my comfort zone and try things that I've never tried before. And I am just learning so much with each video, talking with you guys in the comments, and it's all because of this channel. And I have you to thank for that. So thank you for that. Um, as usual, if you have made it this far into the video, thank you for that as well. I really, truly appreciate each and every person who watches. And especially when you watch this far into the video, it lets the algorithm know that you enjoyed it. And that means it will be shared with more people. So thank you. Um, an extra special thank you, of course, to my patrons. Um, you know, I, I still have a hard time wrapping my head around the fact that people find value in what I do, but your generosity is, it just fills me with gratitude, but also it inspires me. To know that people out there find value in what I do, it just makes me want to try harder and do more of it. And you know, it makes it that much easier every day to push myself to be out in the shop till midnight or whatever it takes. Um, so thank you so much for that. If you are already a subscriber, thank you for that as well. If you haven't subscribed, but you like what I do here and you feel like I've earned it, give me a like and a subscribe. If you feel like I haven't, let me know what I can do better in the comments down below. And as always, until next time, get out there, make something awesome. Most importantly, have some fun, and I hope to see you all again very, very soon.